today's lesson we're going to continue our work that we did last week on angles um, this will be the first video um, I'm properly uploading to the new YouTube channel um, a couple of people have gotten contact and asked could we they watch the videos afterwards and although they were available on Twitter and um, they're a bit hard to access and certainly hard to organize so it's much easier to do that on YouTube so I'll be putting them on Twitter or at least a link to them but from now on they're going to go on this YouTube so if you do want to subscribe you'll get more videos in the future and it'll all be on lessons such as this um, I've made about three or four so far and I'll be uploading to the channel um, as soon as I get them on as well so um, today we're going to do a bit of work on angles as I said this lesson would probably be appropriate um, or suitable for maybe if you're in P I would say P5 uh, to seven. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're P4, I'm certain you could have a look at this, but this is generally what I would say most um, people would be looking at if they were doing angles. So it's a bit of revision, as you can see up there, and a bit of an activity to do today. So, I want to have a look at this first of all. So, we've got a circle here, hopefully you can all see that. And on the circle, I've, point, I've put out four points. I've got um, four arrows here. One's pointing up, one's pointing to the right, One's pointing down the bottom and one's pointing to the left. Now, this isn't what we're doing today, but if you remember work on compasses you've done before, or if you've done them, you'll know that you've got north, you've got south, east, and west. You may know the rhyme, never eat shredded wheat, or not the elephants swim wonderfully. All sorts of different ones you can make up. Um, now, what we're going to look at is an angle. And we did talk about what angles were in the last lesson, but an angle is essentially an, an amount of space in between two points. All right, uh, and we measure angles in degrees. Now I'll give you an example of this. So we'll just put a random shape up here. And I'm going to draw it off my hand so it won't be anywhere near as good. I've got a line here, and I've got a line here, two lines, and they come to a point. So where any two points meet there's going to be an angle, and the angle is the space in between, okay? We don't measure angles in centimetres the way we measure, you know, things with a ruler, or even metres, the way we measure larger things. We're going to measure it with this tool called a protractor. So protractors look like this, and they're slightly see-through, and they're see-through because we put things over the top. So we put them on top of things so we can see underneath to see where the lines are. Let me give you an example. We're going to put it on this line here. Now you'll notice we've got a line at the bottom and a, an intersecting line here and all these little lines pointing up. And this is 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170, 180. Okay? So what we're going to pop it just here. The problem is, as you can see, we need to match up the straight line here with one of the lines here. We're going to choose this one here. So we have to turn it slightly. Okay? Until, and hopefully you can see that, this line is in line with the line on the compass. Now we can start at the zero. Now you wonder why we're not starting at this side. We're not starting at this side because we always start at the zero where the line's on. So the line's here, the zero's here, and we're going to measure this. Okay, so we're going to go up, okay, to here. And if I let go, I'll move my compass back out of the way. There's our angle, what we looked at earlier, and that measured at about, and maybe a bit hard for you to see, 50 degrees. So that line is 50. Now when you're writing degrees, we don't write D or we don't write, you know, the whole word, we just do a little tiny circle that sort of floats up in the air. So 50 degrees, that's degrees there. Now, we're looking at not necessarily the angle of a triangle today, because we looked at that last lesson. We're looking at the angles of a circle, and there are some similarities there um, that you'll see. So we've got our circle here. Now, what if I had, for example, uh, to measure the, between this line and this line? So this here, this space in here, because that is two lines, so we're going to measure those. So let's look at our protractor and measure that. So again, we pop our line on top, of the line here, okay, always always in line with what we're looking at, just there. And um, we'll use blue, just so it fits in. Right up, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 degrees, 60, 70, 80, and bang on, 90 degrees, okay? Now, if you're being very clever, you'll know that that's actually called a right angle 
okay? A rectangle. It's where two lines, and one is straight and vertical, and one is straight and horizontal, where they meet. Now, I could guess and say that these three are all going to be the same, so let's prove that. Let's take this angle, spin it around. We haven't changed the size of it. We're just moving it exactly the same. So that one, oops, let's not forget, sorry, was 90 degrees. That one's 90 degrees as well, so let's write that in here. Okay, spin this one around here. Yep, perfect, 90 degrees as well. And that must mean that this is gonna be 90 degrees as well. So if you were standing and facing forward and you turned a quarter of a circle, so where my hand is here, so I turned just there, that would be 90 degrees. If you did it twice, it would be 90 plus 90. If you did it three times, it would be 90, 90, and 90, get back to the board. And if you did it four times, it would be 90, four times. So if I wanted to find out how many um, degrees, okay, we're in a whole circle, how would I find that out? I would have to add up 90, 90, 90, 90, or I could go 90 times 1, 2, 3, 4. So let's do that now. Okay, so 90, we'll do it in black here. And we could do it both ways. Now I'm sure you've done multiplication before, but we'll do it together anyway. 4 times 0, so we think of our 4 times tables, so the first one of those is 4 times 0. It's going to be zero because zero times anything is always zero and then four times nine so we're going through our four times tables four times six four times seven four times eight four times nine let you get a chance to do it it's 36 and the answer is 360 degrees now before we just finish it let's double check and we'll do 90 plus 90 plus 90 Zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is going to be zero. Nine plus nine, well that's 18. Plus nine is 27. Plus another nine is 36, 360 degrees. That's really important to remember. Okay, so we've worked it so far, we've worked out that, oops, did it? We've worked out that there are 360 degrees in a circle. Okay, let's do a quick bit of revision. We've kind of done a bit of this, but I want to go back for a second and look at some triangles. And this will help us because we now know a bit more about degrees. I want to measure one of these angles. And I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna ask you if you know what kind of triangle it is as well. So we'll start off with the orange one, sort of uh, caramel -y, mustard -y color. And we'll use our protractor, we'll measure just here, okay. We'll measure this one, oh, I need to resize that. So line it up, remember, I nearly forgot. I'll go line this up. There we go, perfect. We'll measure this one here. That's 60 degrees, okay? Let's try this as well. And that one's 60, so two are the same. And we'll spin this around. One last one, doesn't matter what we do it. You have to get a bit fancy sometimes. And I can do it upside down here, but that's also 60. So we've got 60. 60 and 60 degrees. So we have 60, 60 and 60 degrees, which makes this an equilateral triangle. Now, right. we'll go across, okay, to this one. There's one over here in the corner as well. Um, let's measure the angles on this one. So we have a protractor. We're lining up our line with this, and we're going to measure this. This one is, it looks about 75 degrees. Let's put that down just there. And we'll go to the next one. Seventy-five as well. Oops, I did it. Seventy-five degrees. The last one, I think it's a bit harder for me to do a little bit bigger there. I can already tell this is smaller than 75, but we'll put it in anyway. It's about 30, 
35. Or 30 rather, not 35, sorry. 30. Now, this means we've got two angles that are the same and one is different, so it makes it an isosceles. Oops, there's the, I always forget to say that. Oh, go across here. The last one, I'm not even going to measure these, I just want to tell you, each of these are completely different. So if they're completely different, it makes it a scaling. And that's the three different types of triangle, but using their angles. And if you remember in that last lesson, or if you've done it before, that the rules with the lines are exactly the same with the angles. So the scaling, all the lines are different lengths and all the angles are different sizes. That's what makes it a scaling. In the isosceles, we've got two angles that are the same and two lines that are the same. And we've got um, one angle that's different or different to the other two and one line that's different to the other two. So in this case, one line different, two the same. And equilateral, everything's the same. They're all the same. And the angles and the lines are the same as well. Okay, let's come across here. So, uh, we, we could look more at angle types, and we have looked a little bit of, on that before, um, of various things like that. We're going to look at different angles that are in a circle. Okay, so what I'm going to come across here. This is an angle that I've made. Okay, now there are four different types, all right? If I was to measure this, okay, I could see, if I get bigger, I could see that, oops, there we go, just have to line that up, there, that, let's use green, this is about 43, 44 degrees, so it's less than 90 degrees, and if an angle is less than 90, okay, we call this an acute angle. And the way I always remember that is it's small. It's the smallest type of angle you can get. So we call it a cute angle. The way you would see a small little animal, but it's very cute looking, it's small. So a cute angle, a cute angle. Okay, smaller than 90 degrees. So smaller than an L, if you haven't got a protractor. Uh, 90 degrees L. Speaking of our L, I've got one here. Okay, here's our L here. And we talked about this before. You should know what this one is. This is a right angle because it's exactly 90 degrees. We don't even need to measure it, we know it's 90 degrees. It's a right angle or an L, a right angle. Now, if I was to perhaps measure that, it would get 90. It's bigger than an acute angle, okay, but it's smaller than our next angle, which is this, okay. Now, this is if we measure it it's definitely bigger than a right angle because look it's bigger than that else it goes even wider so when we go to measure it we'd have to make sure when we black here we go all the way up here and this is nearly 140 it's 136 degrees it's really really big so it's 136 degrees it's bigger or larger than a right angle and an acute angle, okay, but it's smaller than our last type of angle. Why would give you the name? See the name for shouldn't it? This is called an obtuse angle. Okay, an obtuse angle. Our last one here looks a bit strange, and this is how I always remember this one. If you've ever been to the doctor, sometimes they'll do something called testing your reflexes. They might do it to you, you maybe have seen it in cartoons or films, where someone will put their knee, put their knee there, if you see my knee, and they'll get a little hammer and they'll tap on your knee. And your foot will do that sometimes. If I do it with my hand here, pretend this is my knee, I'll tap on your hammer, tap with a little hammer on, on your knee, and your thing will move up. So it looks like a little knee. So that could be someone sitting in a chair, that could be their leg, and when they tap, there's their knobbly knee there. Your foot here. Okay. Okay, that's your trousers. And when they tap on their knee, their foot will move up. Now, if we have this off, just use that there. Okay, there we go. This angle, we're going to measure, is called a reflex angle because that 
when you tap your knee, it's called testing your reflexes. So we're going to use our protractor. Now this is a bit fiddly, we'll have to be very careful. We can already tell, look, our protractor's not big enough. Even if I go from zero all the way up to 180, it's still not enough. So we have to actually fill in the gaps, fill in the second angle. We've got to remember that that's 180. We spin it around and we fill in. And sometimes you've got to work upside down with these. So if you were using a page, you would of course turn your page over. And we go from zero all the way to 50. So we add those two together and that will give us, where are we here? We were, I should be letting you do it or think about it. What do you think? So you have eight, I think you have nine, 10, so you have to do the 10, so you have 13. So you have 230 degrees. And this is called a reflex angle. If you have a, um, let me get rid of all this. Let's make a new one actually, make a brand new one. Okay, for a reflex angle, so we'll make a brand new one. Okay. Um, which one there, even, even sharper. Okay, if you have what's called a full protractor, one of those like this, you don't need to add them up, you can actually just go from here, but they're not that common, so you can go from zero all the way around, which if you have on them, it's much easier. And that one is 310, I think it is. Um, but that's really useful to have there. So we'll go back and we'll have a quick look at, at testing these out. So as we're going back, we should remind us ourselves we're going. So we've got reflex angles. I think the biggest angles you can get. So they're bigger than an obtuse, and bigger than a right angle, and bigger than an acute angle. We've got an obtuse, which is bigger than a right angle, and bigger than an acute angle, but it's smaller than a reflex angle. Okay. We've got a right angle, which is our L, okay? Right angle, right angle, right angle. So on our panel here, we've got right angle, right angle, right angle, right angle. Okay, TV, right angles, right angles. And last one, we've got the tiniest angle, it's acute angle, it's an acute angle, it's less than 90 degrees. So, if we go down here, let's do a quick bit of revision, a quick bit of summing up, finish off for today. So as you see here, then we, this actually only puts down three of them. It gives you a right angle, an obtuse angle, and acute, it doesn't give you any reflex angles because that's left off this so one. Can you tell me, just by looking at them, what we think each of these is. The first one, what do we think? Well, the way of testing this, is it bigger or smaller than an L? So this one here, that's definitely smaller. So it has to be an acute angle, because it's smaller than 90. What about number two? Is it bigger or smaller than an L? Well, it's bigger, because an L would be that. So it's bigger there. But if it's bigger than an acute angle, it has to be obtuse. Number three, oh, it's a bit tricky. We've got a straight line, and so we've been very, very accurate. I think our, our right angle would go here. So I think it's actually just smaller, just smaller than a right angle, which makes it an acute angle. Number four, oh, it's very small. It's very small. It depends what we're measuring. If we were measuring this one, it would be a reflex, but we're not measuring that today. It would be this one in here. And that would be an acute angle. So, so far, they're going to be all acute. Another one as well, smaller than an L, has to be acute. Okay. Six, bigger than an L, has to be obtuse. Seven, very close, but I do think that is an L, so it has to be a right angle. And number eight, oh, it's very difficult, but I think it's just smaller than an L. So that's going to be an acute angle. And that is how we measure and identify different angles in a circle. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to see any more videos, please subscribe and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.